Hello, hello. A little bit behind here, but we're making do. Wedding planning, ooh. That, uh, that's a big undertaking. undertaking. <laughs> Especially these days. Things have gotten much more complicated than it may, uh, I mean, they were involved and complicated before, but it's been cranked to 11. <laughs> uh, heavy side is about as much as you can, uh, as much as you can do, right? <clears throat> All right. Um, we need to be better about tweeting about this. I'm going to shoot out a quick tweet and we are going to hop into it. I think I was kind of expecting not to continue doing um, this tray app that we've been working on, but uh, I think there's there was a couple of things that came up. came up after the stream last time that I think might actually be worthwhile touching on. Streaming more chart. Stop by. Tweet. Paste and paste. <clears throat> right, we're going to go ahead and switch right over. Arrgh. Why is it doing that? some reason my display is always reset and I definitely forgot to uh, deal with that. Um, there we go. Annoying, annoying, annoying. Okay. Um, don't exactly need a work slot on the, on the stream. Awkward. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna be playing around with a uh, Atari tray app a little bit more. Um, we have done a few of these now, and let's go ahead and do let's get this thing spun up so we have something to look at. I gotta remember to move out of the way because my tray happens to be like right there. Move things around a little bit and uh, didn't have the forethought to uh, consider that. Well, so what kind of planning stuff do you do for the wedding? Are you, uh, this is for you, friend, relative. Um, I mean, and you don't have to share if you don't want to. <laughs> Not trying to, trying to drill you on a nice. Congrats, vendor is fun. Food tasting, uh, I gotta admit, was my favorite thing, which um, it's probably a uh, not an atypical thing to say. Where is this channel? We've got too many. We've got too many channels. Do the thing. Here we go. Yep. Um, if you're at all interested in Tari, we've got a Discord that we are pretty active in. Um, so definitely recommend uh, hopping in that if that is your thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I 
no no worries i just i asked the question uh uh, a little bit of like a small talk thing and then i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. public forum public forum changes things okay so we we've got the tray app um and we are running we've got vt with react npm version 8 so we're going to do these are our scripts, so we're going to do npm tar dev. That'll give us the thing that we're working with. And it should pop up here when it loads. So Vite starts up. We'll get our tray up. Um, and we have events in one direction and we want to go the other direction. So sort of a mental model that I think has been helpful in explaining this is the Intari, the front end is decoupled enough from the um, back end that you can kind of think of your front end, however you make it happen, build vanilla JavaScript, whatever, what have you. Hey, Chris. Um, nice party crab. <laughs> the party crab has arrived. The so, so the front end, however you make it happen, uh, it just needs to end up with some sort of um, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, Wasm combination. Um, so in this case, we're using Vite partly because uh, their dev experience is real nice. Um, and let's move it up in the corner here so we can see a little bit better. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't point it out. The floating emojis, those make me happy. <laughs> so we got the tray. If we click it, we get our little app here. When we click, um, we're invoking it from JavaScript, from the JavaScript side of things when we click this button. It's reaching out to the uh, um, Rust side of things, and it's returning the memory that's in use. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes. Did we? Oh, you know what? Um, hey, Jason. How's it going? Um. Got distracted now. Uh, I need to open up my doc. And yeah, I hear that. I hear that. For those that don't know Jason, a uh, fellow small kid club. Um, Makes things a little bit more complicated in the pandemic. I feel you though. Um, so let's see. So we've got, um, so, so that the getting, getting back to my explanation here, um, we have sort of the front end and the back end. However, the front end is created, um, as long as it's some form of HTML, JSS, or JS, CSS, or WASM, or what have you. Um, and they're decoupled enough that you can kind of think of that as like the front end, and Rust is your back end. So anything that you can do in Rust, you can pretty much do in Tari. Probably some um, caveats there. And, and, ways you can go about things that might be better than other methods but um for the most part if it's in if it's a rust crate you can pull it in and you can use it and that can kind of serve like your back end and it's not http calls but you can kind of think of it like that <laughs> rust a thing that i dread on the bottom of my truck you just need to you need to embrace the rust it's uh yeah <laughs> 
it, it gives a character. That's that's what I uh, that that's always been my reasoning. <laughs> my lack of maintenance just gives my cars character. <laughs> the universe said that uh, it needed to fix your rust problem. So we have basically a front end and a back end. And right now what we're doing is from the front end, we are um, invoking via this button a call out to the back end, which is a Rust function. Um, but we want to go the other direction too. So we want to say like, we click this once, it's updating my memory once. We want to invoke it from the other direction. So we might have, probably the easiest way to do this is like a refresh or, or a, I guess refresh is probably the easiest way to say it. Or pull, but a button that we can click that reaches back to the Rust side and says, "Hey, give me a value every five seconds" or something like that. So we we were looking at that at the beginning of the stream last time, but I could not find the function to actually do that uh, Rust to front end. I want a button that updates my memory. That would make things so much easier. I feel that. <laughs> Goofing is perfectly okay here. I uh, am known for my terrible dad jokes, which I attest are amazing, but um, not everybody agrees with me, particularly my wife. <laughs> I, I think there's too much of a good thing, right? Um, so... We got a little help. Um, <laughs> nice. Chris, uh, Chris sent me the emoji bomb that he dropped in. Thank you. Perfect Friday thing. So the, the function that we were looking for is we were, uh, <clears throat> got some help from, uh, Ethiopastacos. Go with that. Thank you. If you end up watching this, um, or I, I'm sure we'll continue chatting. I know we've been talking about testing stuff. Uh, but helpful call out. It's actually in the on window now. Um, so let's go to docsrs. Um, good. And we've updated this now, so it actually goes directly to the current version. Um, and it should be on a window. There's an emit. Uh, is it in modules? Window has an emit public function. So that's what we're looking for. Um, I forgot to open my code window. <laughs> the. Uh, my reasoning is um, the funniest for me, and if anybody else appreciates it, good. If not, I'm happy being funny to myself. <laughs> Please just exit. Thank you. <laughs> I must be funny. Somebody laughed. It might have just been me, but come on, computer, you can do it. Open VS code. So we do emit window dot emit. Um, and then on the, <laughs> I'm funny for the grounds. <laughs> you know you've hit on a good joke when you get a loud groan. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Eye rolls are the best. Eye rolls and groans are the best inputs. <laughs> mm. 
Okay, so we need to do emit and we can do an event and a payload. Um, so payload would be like the data that we want to send back. Payload is likely going to be something like um, returning this, the value of the memory. Um, yes. Okay, so start a serialized thing. So we can make our data however we want. Throw it to a serial date. That gives us a payload. An event, I think, is just the, it just needs to match up on the front end where we do, we set up a listening, uh, listening hook. And I don't know if we have anything to help with that. Unlisten event name. Okay, so this is for emitting events. Wow, come on. What is the deal today? There we go. Holy. Okay, so on the front end right now, we are doing invoke. Which is different than event. This event system allows you to emit events to the backend. Oh, and listen to events from it. Okay. Event callback. Okay, so invoke, I think, in, oh, there's an evo invoke and emit. Um, emit. is something that you can set up Rust to listen for and invoke is like invoking a function directly. Um, but besides, yeah, okay, there's a listen, great. Um, so besides emit, we also have emit and invoke, we also have listen. So we can do listen and Let's we'll start this back up. Um, we, I think, are going to start with the Rust side of things first, get that all hooked up, and then we are going to shift into the React side of things. Oh, so okay, so there's a listen. So we've got we've got the Rust and the JavaScript APIs basically mirroring each other here. So if we emit in the JavaScript JavaScript side of things, um, we can window dot listen. On the Rust side of things. So I was kind of expecting to see some async stuff in here, but I'm not. I've definitely done less async things. I'm pretty sure you can just mark that as async and it'll operate the same. I don't think there's... I think it gets as odd as promises in JavaScript side of things. That is definitely something I would like to get into more async and rust, but it will happen eventually. So we want to, we are emitting an event. We are, I heard my cat scratching stuff. Um, we are emitting the event from this side of things. I 
I guess almost we want to... If we're going to do like a refresh button. I mean, I guess I can just emit it. We'll do we'll do one emit when we start up. Um, and then, then we can look at doing the button. I think that's probably the way. So on setup, we're hiding the window. Um, and what we can do is then... Right now we only have our sys stuff in this separate function here. Now, I'm not 100% certain on the git system memory on how this scoping goes with this command. So we're probably going to end up trying things. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to straight up copy and paste this at first. And then I kind of want to, I guess we'll just grab this whole thing. Um, we really only need sys once, I think. And we can then term Rust terminology here, borrow it. So if we left click, um, Trey received a left click, we're setting window stuff. Um, window stuff is Okay, so I keep distracting myself here. Um, set focus is another thing that we might want to come back eventually, but there is an issue that we ran across on that a bunch of this doesn't work on Mac. Um, and for my own memory, um, set uh, setting focus also does not appear to work on Mac. Um, so I think we had some regressions right around that. So we are going to, um, Hey Ben, how are you doing? Good to see you. We are emitting a response from rust. We're grabbing mutable sys. We refresh all the system information. That gives us the used memory. And then we can get the used memory to string. Um, we should have system tray events. Okay, so we've got a, we've got the window here. So we should be able to do a window dot event. Hey, look at that. So the event is a naming is one of those hard things in CS, isn't it? And then however the rest of the joke goes, caching and off by one errors and that other thing that I'd never remember. <laughs> um, so what do we want to call this event? We want to say, uh, I guess memory stats memory updated. And our payload is going to be Do we need to do any easter? Cannot find value payload. Okay, I mean, that's true. Can we just give it a string directly? I think so. Looks like it. So we don't need to do anything with the value there. So I think we can just do that. Same for these. Get rid of those errors that I've been ignoring forever. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Which part of it? <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, honestly, like, without Rust Analyzer and the compiler, like, it is a superpower. <laughs> it is a superpower. My ability to make things happen in Rust would be greatly diminished without those. To put it to put it nicely. Okay, so we got a rebuild. Um, and I did actually remember to update my priority on OBS. So hopefully no dark drop frames. Looks like we were good. So we got a left click. Meeting response from Rust. It does not like that. Um, we can do inspect because we have dev tools. Um, Tari apps does not provide an export name to listen. Okay. We will come back to that. Does it look like you updated? There we go. So now if I do, oops. We received a left click. Okay, so I think it's working. Um, now we need to start listening for the event. And I will love when we have updated our JavaScript and TypeScript APIs. Import listen. Perfect. Hey, Lucas. This will be so much easier with uh, somebody that just knows it offhand. Um, the uh, listen API event. Um, and also part of this is like, it's nice going through the docs from like, I haven't been invested in the Tari API or Rust side of things much. And like being able to like approach the docs from like, kind of not knowing what's there. It's really nice to like feel how it is working with these docs, um, <laughs> which I think has definitely influenced the conversations I'd had. Uh, so clickety click. We are not getting any errors on the listening. Pre cannot be a descendant. That is fine. Um, sure enough. Okay, so I think the right um, the right thing to do here is a man. My React is rusty. I've been stuck in GraphQL and Node Land for so dang long. I can't remember. Use effect. Use effect is what I'm thinking of. Use effect. Um, so we want to I think this is the way to do it so we need to do blah 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 the I wonder why everybody always thinks the I guess we're changing the state. Um but I wanna run it when yeah, only re rerun when this changes. Um 
Hey Ryan, good to see you. Happy Friday. So that's going to load. So if we would just refresh it, we're going to get a boop. Um, we want to run it whenever your listen changes. Um, Swift today. Is that the first you've gotten into that? I don't... Uh, I thought you've mostly been in the JavaScript world. It's been years. Okay. Design side of things or uh or actually getting into UI deeper work. Speaking of viral jokes. Are you picking up Swift fast? <laughs> I've heard a lot of good things um, that, that it's definitely appreciated what they've done communicate with JavaScript via web view nice nice okay so I need to figure out thank you VS code I need to figure out that so we need to listen for an event and we have a handler um, and it's going to return a promise So Hey Jared. You think you're the person who requests the tray apps feature? Nice. A lot of this is like I imagine that's a thing that was gonna come up regardless. But also it's very helpful to just like have all of this written down so we have a to-do list. For a, a client that I've been working with, we spent the past like day just mapping out all the plans for the future because we've been talking about it for so long. But it's not helpful when it's just stuck in a couple of people's brains. So just like having this stuff in a place where it can be referenced is super helpful. So definitely appreciate it. And it also makes it easier for others to get involved too. All right, so. We have an event, a handler, and it's going to give us a promise. We need to um, whenever that changes. I mean, it's basically going to be yeah, Friday Friday uh, lunch party. <laughs> Everybody's showing up that appreciates terrible jokes. <laughs> uh, no, I did not change any settings. I was just hovering over it and talking um, while reading. I haven't... <laughs> terrible joke lover here. Great. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's a default. I'm, there's definitely since some things I want to turn off on VS Code. I just have not gotten around to it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Xander really loves terrible jokes. <laughs> uh, he's been summoned. He, st he stopped by last time. Um, but maybe all the terrible jokes drove him away. Yeah, so right now I'm just hovering over it. Rip the whole editor apart. Yeah, no, <laughs> the Chris method. Turn all the things off. I can definitely appreciate that... Uh, that viewpoint though. Okay. So I need to I need to refresh myself on the React. So we want to subscribe to an event, I guess. Um, so I mean <laughs> nice. <laughs> you rang. Um people that have been doing React more than I have. Help. So listen is going to give us a promise and listen to an event. Is it just a promise? Are we, is this actual, an actual like, 
event callback returns a promise. Promise resolving to a function to listen to the event. Okay. Okay. So on teardown, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, um, so we can do like, um, we'll just do that for now so it doesn't scream at us. Um, so listen is going to give us, um, let's come this out. Listening will be the function to um, remove, unlisten, I guess is the best way to say it, to unlisten to the event. So when we call this listening, it's going to subscribe to it and it's going to fire every time. Um, listen to the event, and then we set a handler. So we want to basically uh, use effect on first visit of the page. So it's only going to run once because we're giving it uh, no data, data to uh, react to. No pun intended. Um, we want it to run once, subscribe to the event, and then run a function which will set the state every time um, it receives anything about that event. So we want to say um, listen Listen is going to give us an event name, so stuff, because I can't remember what I called it. This naming is hard. Um, and we want to do a thing. And that thing is going to be um, basically the same as we're doing on the button click. So set sysdata. So set sysdata is going to be. Um, I think just a string. Does it give us a payload or something? Event name, event callback. Callback. I guess we could probably just do this. I'm, I'm assuming the payload is going to be the same. Um, and then we can, in use effect, there is a um, teardown. There's, there's a hook that we can call when is unmounted, which the name escapes me. Handle status, return. We can skip effects. What's that tear? Whoa, what's, what is that tear down? Um, clean up. We want to do cleanup, effects with cleanup, because we are set it up, setting up a subscription effectively. So this is the example with hooks. But we don't want to do cleanup. Function handle status change. So subscribe in that. We don't actually want to clean up after the fact. Maybe maybe we don't need to do the cleanup. I feel like we need to. Like I, I, I only want to do the cleanup uh, when it like unmounts. We'll unmount. Unsubscribe. I guess it's just. I guess we just return a function. So, I think if we do. Listen is going to return a. Promise resolving to a function to unlisten to the event. So we'll find out. I think that feels right, though. Okay, 
So clear this out. We are going to refresh, get um, a mount. It subscribes. So now when we click, we are going to receive a left click. We should be emitting a response from Rust. Oh, we did not. Um, we're only listening to stuff, which is not helpful because we need to be listening to stats memory updated. Hey, Tony. Good to see you again. Decided to actually continue the things we were working on last time. Okay, so we are listening to this, which matches what we have... Um, what we are emitting to on the Rust side of things. So when we click the button, we should receive a left click. And it does something else, but we're getting an error. That's fine. Objects are not valid as a React child. With keys event payload ID. So it seems like what we need to do is um, I guess we call it event dot. I think event is probably clear. Um, we only care about the event, so it's giving us everything, which is good. So that click is still working. If we left click here, there we go. Can you perform a React state update on an unmounted component? Let's, let's refresh. It feels like something related to hot reload. Okay, there we go. So now when we left click here, it's an emitting event that we are listening to on the front end and we're getting it in our web view. Cool. Um, so I think the next, what do we got? 20, 25 minutes more. Um, we can to update memory stat once. Massive button. It's okay. So we want to also do pull for memory stat. We'll see how good I am with uh, Rust. So there'll, there'll be two things. We'll be, we can click this button and it's gonna update it for us. Right now it's still invoking the same function, so we will keep getting that. Um, but we want to, what we want to do is um, when we click pull, we want it to basically emit every five seconds or something. Um, <clears throat> And I'd, I still don't know if I like this. I would like to abstract it, but I don't want to get too in the weeds on abstracting out a single call to sys. So right now we are updating it on left click. So this would be the, the use case here is um, we've got it hidden. If you left click, it'll open and it'll immediately update, which makes the most sense. Um, so we can, what are our options? We can, I guess we have two states. We have polling and not polling. So we could probably try emitting an event from the front end and have the Rust side of things listening for that event and there'll be two events so basically be you know keep emitting or st stop emitting um so at the very least i think we can get the event stuff here so we've got invoke um 
answer. No, it's probably an event. Emit. Yep. <clears throat> so we want to emit. E e we want to emit an event. I'm gonna assume that emit is. Uh, and it does return a promise. Um, we need to give it an event and a payload. Um, payload. I guess we can say status. We, we could do we could do one event. That probably maybe, maybe that's easier. Do one event. We listen for that event, and the payload is going to tell us if we're starting or stopping um, our polling status. So, um, what do we want to do? I kind of feel like enums make sense, but I think we're just going to do. We're going to do a Boolean because I'm partly curious how that's going to translate. Um, so we want to await an emit and um, stats memory updated. Stats memory um, poll. So now we should, that will emit an event that we can listen to on the Rust side of things. Now, where would be the best place to listen for that? So we need to listen to an event on from a specific window. So we are getting the window here and we have main window. So we could we basically want to run a function, I think. And the function is going to handle, it's going to take a payload. Um, Cause I, I think we basically want to on startup be listening. And we're not like throwing out that window. We still have the main web view window around. So I think we can just directly in here do a window, a window.listen. Um, and that is going to give us, uh, we need an event and we need a handler. And our handler is going to be the function that we can uh, pass it. So the event is going to be stats memory poll. And then the handler is going to deal with it. Um, so we can do A separate function and that separate function is going to be run anytime that that event is invoked um, so it's it's like a status change polling versus not polling um, and while we are polling um, we're just going to be continuing to return every like five seconds or something like that cool have a good day thanks for stopping by So we want to pull, did I turn off events on here? I wonder if I, cause we're not getting stuff popping up, are we? Um, that is going to bother me. I 
Yeah, we should be displaying it on here. I wonder if I borked something on that. I definitely feel like I borked something there. Um... Just gonna have to do it on this side here. Ah, a couple follows. Thank you. All right, so <clears throat> we are polling for um, system info. Uh, we are going to, I wonder what it expects for a return. Just a function. So I don't think it matters too much. Um, Cause what we end up doing is the same situation here. Um, we have I hope we have um, basically want to do that emit via polling from Rust. Um, ah, okay. And so it wasn't formatting. Um, if you are using Rust Analyzer in VS Code, anytime you hit save and it does not format, it's a pretty clear indication that you have an error somewhere. Okay, so now we, we need to figure out, um, listen, events and static function is going to be where f, so f is going to be a function and a send or marker send. Not quite sure what that is. Um, I think what we're just going to do is grab the window again. Um, except we don't have an app either. Can we get, do we get any? Okay, so we are doing a listen. What are these little dots? That would be helpful. I feel like there's something in there. Um, we need to do a handler. This is where uh, knowing like grokking this is still something that I think like I feel it I feel like this takes some rust knowledge to like quickly grok and I'm mostly getting there but not quite um and that I think it, I think that's something that our guides are going to help with a lot because with the superpower that is rust analyzer and plus VS code or whatever. Um, like you can kind of write Rust without knowing much at all. Like you can be pretty new to it and get into it. Um, but then anytime you need to start like trapping in and understanding like what it's expecting, like I feel like grokking this is definitely going to be a stumbling block. And that's where having guides 
and examples is going to be helpful because that will help bridge the gap between like knowing I need listen and I, I understand it needs a function, but grokking this is not something that's immediately apparent to me yet. So I definitely think guides are going to help with that. On window event. So what's how is that different than listen? Listen to invent on this one. Okay, so I think window event is. So here, I, I my understanding of the differences, uh, listen and emit are things they're doing directly with the web view. Um, on window event and on menu event, those are, there's the, the Chrome around the web view. Um, like that window, that's the type of events that you would receive if you're using these functions. Um, so since we are invoking something, I guess in this case, we're emitting an event from the web view side of things, we need to listen to that web view in this in a specific window. So that's why we're using listen here. Okay, so these have these have some more info. Not seeing anything. Um, Curious, let's just double check to see if there's any our guides actually mention anything about this. I don't think they're yeah, maybe. So when we were looking last time, we were looking at we were looking at on the window module. Okay, so you can actually, um, what well, we kind of ran across this last time too, but you can create a new web view window from JavaScript side of things, which is cool. Um, why did we not run across this last time? Window menu? What were we looking at? System tray. We definitely reorganized this a little bit. Um, so it could be that that reorg just made it more obvious. I don't remember looking at events last time though, or that these have changed slightly. Um, oh, this is cool. You can event e emit an event to all of the windows. Oh, hey, look at that. Now the background process on the command and emit periodic events only to the window that use the command. So that's kind of something that we're trying, that's basically something we're trying to do here. Um, oh, okay, okay. Thanks for stopping by, Ryan. I will, uh, Talk to you later, probably, maybe. We haven't played Tilted Towers yet together. <laughs> Sometime this weekend, maybe. But anyways, have a good uh, have a good rest of your day. All right, so so they're actually doing it on setup. Okay, so we're we're doing it in the same spot. Um, this this example is actually really helpful. In setup, we are doing we're we're getting the main window, um, and it's listening for an event. So this is okay. This this is basically the uh, the magic that we need here. You haven't seen a dino yet. Ah. Um, brief tangent in the Fortnite talk. Um, Chris and I a couple days ago. We we landed tilted for a whole bunch of rounds, and then we did a couple 
trying to find the dino. It's a, uh, it's pretty cute. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, they're so cute. That's one of those things that like, does it really change the gameplay? Not really. Does it really make a difference? Not really. But it's kind of freaking cool to ride a dino in the middle of a battle royale game. Um, they definitely keep things interesting there. They are aggressive if you shoot them. If you feed them um, clum berries, then they give you health or shield, usually. I don't know if they actually give you guns. I think they just like digest and upgrade guns if they run into them. So like if they eat a gun, they'll like spit it back out, potentially upgraded, I think is what we were seeing. Okay, so, um, oh, and listen. So why are they unlistening? Listen to the event and unlisten to the event. I don't know why they would listen and then unlisten. So, I mean, we're doing the listen and I think we just want to continue listening to it forever. Um, so I think this is sort of a once when we get a return Do the thing. And I, I think it'll basically... I don't know if it's going to like loop and get stuck here. I, th I think that's... Uh... I don't think that's quite clear to me. But uh, the way I'm reading that is we get the a handle to the main window, we listen to an event, when that event happens, and we unlisten and then emit follow on. And then we finish the setup. Um, so I don't know if this is going to block. So that's something that we'll find out. Um, but anyways, we are running a function. Um, So if we just did, so, okay, so this is pretty much what we need to do, I think. Um, I think that's basically what we need to do here. Um, so we've got an event. Uh, how's that go again? Is it this? Oh, event. That's like the inline. I think I think we do event here. And event is going to be I don't know what it's going to be. And do we have, do we have access to the window at all there too? I mean, I guess I really only care about the payload, so we can do like an inline function that calls this function. Um, and then we'll have a closure over the window. Maybe that's the easiest way to do it. Um, So if we do that, I think that's going to kind of find type window in the scope. Um, so if we do this, we can copy this directly. This will give us a print of the payload, which is 
fine with me. And then we want to um, call this function poll for system info, and we're going to pass it the window. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but um, I think this is going to work. Uh, okay. So window is we're unwrapping window here and we're kind of like taking ownership of it here. So I think we only need a reference to it. Um, and so now we're passing a reference and it's saying it's expecting a struct window, which makes sense. So I think if we say here, we only want to reference the window, that reference will be enough for us to do the emit. Um, I don't think we need to take ownership of it. And I think that is going to make all of this happy. It's borrowed here. Let's see if the compiler is helping us out. Besides that, okay. Yeah, I wonder if there was going to be something with borrowed here. Um, may I live borrowed a window? I live borrowed value window, which is owned by the current function. Um, so I wonder if to force the closure to take ownership of window. And this is where I'm wondering if it's gonna if it's gonna hold on to it. Um, we'll try it, and we'll see what it does. We'll get pretty close to time here. Value borrowed here after move. Yeah, and that's what I was wondering. Um, so our return. This is basically our return, um, but we don't need to actually return right away. So what we can do is say, so we just want to hide the window and then start listening. Yeah, I'm definitely re um, references borrow, move, all that kind of stuff. Um, I could definitely use some more uh, practice with that. I feel that. Okay, the scene enum variant takes one argument, but zero is supplied. Okay. Are you happy with that? Move out of window occurs here. We still need to do that move. Window is borrowed here. I guess we still have to do the move. Yeah, and that like functionally I I understand it. Um but it's and this is this is definitely why I like learning around a project so like doing this like i get the ideas behind it and i mostly know what i need to do but like putting into practice is a whole different issue and like putting it into practice in the context of a thing that you're trying to achieve like you know kind of you want to get from a to b um is window clonable that is a good question i'm presuming it is Um, well, let's, let's give this a shot first. We can skip the function. I'm assuming it's an arc underneath. Um, hey Manny, good to see you. How are you?
Window, window. Oh, I'm on window. Um, okay, we're getting into Rye. I don't know how to answer your question, Chris. Or statement. Been meaning to send a video update of the research you've gathered thus far. Yes, I would be very interested in that. Life has been kind of busy recently, so I haven't had a chance to kind of get back to that and catch up with you. For context, anybody uh, um, not aware, Manny is also interested in financial things and is um, working on an app that coincidentally is doing a thing very similar to what... I am doing in Funatter, um, which is also a finance app. Um, so we we sort of ran across each other in that shared interest, and we've we've been uh, kind of chatting about it since. Yeah, I. Um, to be clear, I wasn't expecting to answer it. <laughs> uh -huh. But that is a good question that I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, two, two people working on similar things. Um, you know, you say that, but like finding people that are interested in finances that have a knowledge of programming things is more rare than you think. Or maybe I'm just looking at the wrong spots. But there's definitely like, it's starting to get pretty niche down at that point, I feel like. <laughs> yeah okay all right it's not just me <laughs> i'm like it feels like it shouldn't be rare but it kind of is yeah yeah and our implementation was very similar i i think that's probably the big thing too like a lot of the um a lot of the interest that people have tend to go towards like budgeting and historical things as the primary function um it is an arc okay um i will need to look into cheap so cloning is cheap and possible um i i think these are probably two good things to highlight and i mostly get that but that's definitely something I'm going to need to get into more. Arcs, arcs and cells are like, I feel like there's one or two other things you were talking about, Chris, that uh, are like, um, since we are deep into these, like need to learn things. Um, let's make sure I get that URL correct before I, um, Drop it. This. Chris is working on this. It is good if you are learning Rust from a background that comes from JavaScript or um, I, think, I think Chris, you have to give me the, the right quote. Okay, okay, I got it. Uh, is JavaScript, JavaScript Ruby and something else maybe? I think you were saying. But my background is a lot of JavaScript. Uh, so this definitely speaks to me. So most of my Rust I've actually learned reading the book and in the context of working in Tari. But uh, dynamic languages, <laughs> basically not C, um, which is convenient because I've intentionally avoided C. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's got some good content there. So uh, um, go check out what uh, Chris is doing there. Um, Anyways, the yeah, so so Manny and I were we were talking. We um, the things that we're interested in the finance app are um, sort of the future planning cash flow kind of space, um, and that definitely feels to feels like it's more unique. Speaking, of, do I have? Yes, I do have a GitHub link in here. Um, so to answer your question, uh, sure stack. That is the project that I was talking about. 
Okay, let's see if we can uh, get this here working right quick. Um, functions never used. I'm okay with that. That is intentional. Um, so we are emitting a response from Rust. Now we, if we click poll. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh no, we got, okay, so we're listening to stats, memory, poll. And when we click poll, we want to emit. An event with polling true, we should be listening to said event in the setup phase here. And it should just be printing right now. Got a window event name with payload. It doesn't appear to be doing that. Give it a quick refresh just to make certain. Hmm. Not sure. Um, yes. This is a good way to say it. Now, I've definitely done a few past streams. Um, so I, I throw all of my uh, previous streams up on YouTube. If you are interested in seeing some of the work uh, I was doing on that, um, some of my past past streams have been on that and I'm sure we'll have some future streams. Um, I actually do have uh, Atari, Atari app in that. Uh, did I update it? It might be a much earlier version of Atari. I don't remember, but I do. I do have a Atari app coming out of that too. Okay. So we definitely didn't crash the web view. Why is this? We we want to do this. We want to do this function, but I don't know if we're going to be able to get to it today. If I can get this print, I think I'm going to be happy. Thanks for the follow to stack. Drink. I need to need to take the time to uh um to the work to get to affiliate. <laughs> So, which mostly means a couple more streams in a in a month, but that way you can uh, y'all can use channel points to tell me when to drink because I forget to do that within reason, of course. <laughs> I've seen the follow up of <laughs> people spamming hydrate. <laughs> okay, so we definitely want to run this function. We it's. But we're probably not going to be able to figure that out today. Um, and I, th I think to Chris's point, we can probably clone the window and that's going to work just fine here. Um, <laughs> chug, chug, chug. It's hydrate, 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 hydrate. <laughs> okay. Why isn't this firing? That is the last thing that, okay. Meeting is response. So this works invoking from JavaScript. Invoking from Rust works. But when we pull from memory stat, that doesn't appear to be working. So let's do, we are emitting that. We are listening there. Event. event name. So we were doing a listen with event. So I, I guess at this point we've literally got to this exact implementation. Um, I wonder if hiding it actually prevents us from getting the event. Can we not get events if the window is hidden? Although that, I mean, that shouldn't matter. 
But I'm, I'm wondering if it doesn't let us listen to our vent if that window is hidden. It's the only thing that I, th I feel like could uh, be catching us. So if we hit pole, nothing. Hmm. possible that that could be the issue I mean I could put a log here but like that's not doing much and I feel like that's the only tweak that makes sense there so if we hide it and we open it back up invoking from JavaScript and nothing Hey, Naren. Good to see you. We might have to throw in the towel unless anybody else has any bright ideas. I'm not sure why this is not giving us anything. I mean, I don't think this matters. Like if we just straight up do, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not gonna bother listening to event here, but it says my debugger work. Um, where? So we've got, um, oh, I do not know. Um, so we've got an event, the event is called stats memory poll. Stats memory pull. So we're emitting either emitting an event from the front end. Um, called stats memory pull, and just to copy paste to make sure we didn't spell it wrong. Um, let it rebuild. Yeah, no, definitely a fair call out. Does the ID type unlisten? I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, and I'm assuming that uh, Lucas had to bail because uh, otherwise, I would assume he knows it right offhand. Um, I'm not quite sure how this the listening works. That was definitely. That was definitely like the last thing that I've looked in, looked at. Um, Cause I, th I, I kind of feel like that's a little bit more of a unique situation. Like invoke seems to be the thing that everybody's going to use. Like I want to do something from the front end and like make Rust do something on the back end and get a response. Um, I feel like listening to event on the rust side is probably less will be less often used at least in my mind and it's definitely something that i didn't look at at all nice tari stuff on a stream i would be up for that okay um So I'm not sure what this unlistening is doing. We're setting the ID. So now we've pretty much copied this exactly. Yeah, so I'm not quite certain. Net process. What's this a net process? Okay, so this is a loop. Oh, they do have a move. So it's getting a window, I guess. 
good to know. So this is emitting an event on a loop that the front end could listen to. Um, this is listening for an event that the front end could send. This is emitting an event, which happens to be the same as this one. So if something, if something actually invokes this from the front end, it would just keep firing off this event, um, which is kind of what, I guess that's kind of what we do or we want to do, but I wanted to try this, um, window listening. So maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding what the expectation is behind listen. On the JavaScript side of things, I would have said that listening is, you, you can either do it um, like a once or an on. An on would be like every time you receive an event, do the thing. Um, but I, I think functionally using a command would probably work too. So this is interesting. I mean, we're listening, so it shouldn't matter. But uh, they're actually doing a payload struct. Yeah, and I kind of feel like just, I don't know, uh, you could probably do it with a command or via listening. But uh, Spawns a thread with a loop emitting. Yeah, so this this command here, um, you can use what well, when you have a command in the JavaScript that it, side of things, you can do an invoke. So we've got an init process under an evoke handler. Um, just invoke handler. So same thing we're doing here. And from JavaScript side of things, you can call an evoke. Invoke would, based off of this, trigger this process. And that's going to fire off an event that the front end can listen to. And it's spying a thread and just continually firing that off. But we want to, on the Rust side of things, listen to an, for an event. Um, but I'm not, like this... Unlisten to the event using the ID returned from the listen function. I guess, oh, okay. And once API is also exposed in the window struct. So we're listening in both places. You, you can. So right now I've got a command that I can invoke that will just give it to me once. Um, and that's not a command I don't think actually is like going through a command doesn't do the listening stuff I don't think I don't, I don't know functionally what the difference is as far as like implementation in Rust um, but it, it, it ends up sort of feeling the same from the JavaScript side of things your Rust and your JavaScript are both listening right now. Where is the event send that you would be listening to? Um, so my... My front end is listening to stats memory updated. When you open up the app via the left click, it is firing off that event via the emit on the stats memory updated event key um, so that's that would be uh, rusty meeting the event web view listening for the event called stats memory updated and we we're also trying to do the opposite of that javascript side of thing emitting an event 
called Stats Memory Poll and Rust Listening for that event. So they're both listening, but for different events. So that event fired off by JavaScript should be picked up here. And I think the setup is the right place to do that, but I'm just not. I mean, it says there's also a once API. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm understanding this correctly. I'm not certain why they're unlistening here, but I, I think we can just do it's like set up a listen on setup and it will just keep on listening for the lifetime of that web view. After the setup, doesn't that window go out of scope? Um, <clears throat> the so as I understand it, you always have yeah out of scope of the setup function, but you can always get it back. Like it's not. I don't think it's actually destroying the web view window. I think you always have a main web view window sticking around. Um, so it, it goes out of scope of the setup function, but you can you can get it back by doing an app. Like when window is chained through, and you can always get the window back by calling it by its label. Yeah, so it's getting in it's getting an in, uh, instance of that window or getting a handle to the window instance. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Um so yeah, I don't I don't think it is dropped entirely. And Chris says that's because it's an arc. And I'll trust him on that. <laughs> so we're listening to, for stats memory poll, but we just don't ever seem to get it here because all we're doing is a print of that. Um Don't I don't think that unless it matters. Yep. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. I don't I don't think it matters. I don't know if it actually matters or not. It's kind of unclear to me. Um and I didn't have it in there originally. And it is I don't actually have any controls in here, other is you'd be able to see it, but it is move. It, it's off the screen. It's showing up because um, we commented out this as well. So it's viewable, and we're not hiding hiding it anywhere anymore. And when we click this, it's actually moving it. So you can see that's updating immediately because we are firing it off on this window you met. So we don't have the web view hidden at all, and we should be listening for an event. And when we click this, we're emitting an event from the front end. Um, let's just, to make sure all of our bases are covered, Give that a shot. Oh, um, so this will show up in console, which went away. Booped. So the button click is happening, and we should be calling the emit. Um, I don't know if it... I originally had it awaiting emit. Um, because emit is returning a promise. So I think we do need to wait for it. Maybe I had some other error before. Invalid type map expected a string. Oh. So 
So is it literally expecting, is that, is that the issue and we're just not seeing any error on the front end or on the back end rather? Um, That was it. <laughs> okay. Um, going way longer than I was hoping for, but I feel like we're so close. So we're getting the payload. Um, now, I, I mean, I, I don't think the unlisten matters. Like, I wanted to just keep listening for it. I'm fine with that. Um, Oh, closure may not live. Do I need to? Oh, yeah. So curious what it does. Oh, I got you, got you. Yeah, sure. That is also curiosity that I'm worth or interested in. Uh, Satisfying as well. It exposes a once function on the client. On the client on the Rust side of things. Hello, Dev Kajier. Kaye, you have to tell me if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, you made a uh, response from Rust. Yeah, so I, I, I think it's not actually doing anything now. Remove an event listener. So that feels weird. Like we're setting up an event. The event is not going to fire until we. He's got a cat there. Um, Kitty is coming to play. Yeah. So I'm not. Uh, this feels odd to me. I mean, maybe maybe if we do a main window emit, and on the emit we also unlisten. Pronounced it right the first time. Dev Kajay. Dev Kajay. That's what I said. <laughs> now you're testing my memory. <laughs> uh, hi, hi, Kitty. Say hello. She's not interested in looking at the camera. Just in getting scratches. Okay, so yeah, I'm not sure what the unlisten does. Let's try this clone. Um, we are doing this. So I think instead of a reference, we can do a, is it just a dot clone? Use the move. Do we need to do the move if we're calling a clone? Is it just window.clone? I thought it was. Okay, you do? Okay. Because you're telling, you're creating a copy that you're then moving into the closure scope. Yeah, that makes sense. Value borrowed here after move. So how do we um, I want to immediately hide it as well. I could probably just do it this way. Um, 
Because I don't think it, that actually matters. Cannot move out of window because it is borrowed. Move out of window occurs here. Borrow a window occurs here. You don't want to give up your view. You're creating a new one to give away. So we're moving the window into the closure scope and creating a clone. Move occurs due to use in closure. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, all right. That makes sense. So we need to clone it before we move it in there. I got you. So um, let what do we want to call this? Um, polling window equals window dot clone ah. the cat is licking the green screen the can't even tell uh, move occurs because the polling window has type window, which does not implement the copy trait. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm thinking so. I think that is intentional. But then I don't know how to do it. So does this give us a... I mean, on the event... So what's event? Like I don't really... I mean, I care about the payload, but... Like what's what's the actual Yeah, I'm not sure what that intended. I feel like we've channels sound familiar in the conversations. Um but I don't I don't remember offhand. I wanna I wanna say that we pass handle around somewhere that we get that we can get the window off of invoked got a window event ah okay event handler and data so we don't actually have the app or anything there I wonder I mean, we've got a mutable app. Are, is the expectation here that we should be passing app? Does that feel weird? Because we can always get the main window via the label. I think it's app. Help me. Uh, 
Yeah, pull for system info is my function, yes. Mute cannot be sent between threads safely. I could, I could maybe do that, listen on the cloned one, but it doesn't have the copy trait, so would that not work? I mean, I, I feel like... Yeah, listening on the cloned one wouldn't do anything different. That was that that's my understanding as well. Um I'm not sure. And we've gone way over time, so this might be where we throw in the white flag and ask the question in Discord in a few minutes. I'm sure it's gonna be an easy answer. Or it's not. <laughs> it's one of those things like it feels like it should be easy, but I know there's interest or there's issues with uh <laughs> I forgot where I joined myself. Nice. Um I know there's issues with um like ownership what is it? Um is it ownership of the main thread or something? I don't quite remember now. Um, and I'm not, no, that might not even be related. I don't know. I don't know what the expectation is here. That's. I, I think this is definitely something that um, gets squared away, and that is going to be a PR to the docs. Because in this... Like this feels, uh, I mean, obviously it's just like a kind of a kind of looted example, but um, I, I feel like getting access to the window or the app is like going to be very useful for this listen. Like you want to respond and do something and then return a response potentially. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for thanks for the help. I'm glad y'all could stop by. We learned some stuff. We got some of it working. Um, got a lot further than I think I was expecting. Um, and we're, I feel like we're real close here. It'll probably be a couple of tweaks and we're going to get this working. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fun to see. This... Uh, We'll see. This might be the last one on the tray stuff. I, th I think there's probably other things that might be worth exploring. Um, and I'd like to do potentially some Raspberry Pi stuff in the near future and work on Finatter, the finance app. So many things to play with. Should be fun. Um, I definitely think the tray apps, though, and Tari are a very interesting feature, especially since you have um very like uh primary support for rust which is going to work well for these sort of like system -y type things um like you know there's plenty of like system watching uh apps out there um it's a little bit of a convoluted example but uh there's i think there's plenty of use cases for a tray tray app which is why it was fun to explore this um, but we'll, we'll keep looking at other things. So that will be, uh, next streams. Glad y'all could stop by. Um, have a good weekend. You're going to go read the book uh, on lifetimes. <laughs> I feel that. Uh, I, I feel like I'm going to have to do a bunch of projects multiple times to like get the borrow and lifetimes, but like, 
it's in my head and conceptually I understand it, but to like be able to on demand program it without having to like feel my way through it would be nice. I definitely feel like I'm kind of walking around in the dark a little bit on that. So it'll be nice to get that cleared up. I need a flashlight, but good to see y'all. Uh, we will, uh, talk to y'all next time. Bye. <laughs>